Number 21. Calculate the standard cell potential for each reaction below and note whether the reaction is spontaneous under standard state conditions. All right, so we have our equation here. We have MN solid plus SNNO32 aqueous yields MNNO32 uh, aqueous plus SN solid. And we want to find out what that standard cell potential is. So that's always going to be an E cell. Now, there's going to be a notch up here, that degree sign, but that just means that you're under standard state conditions. So we're just trying to find that cell potential for the reaction that they gave us. Now, the first thing is, is that when we're talking about standard, uh, standard cell potentials, we're talking about oxidation reduction. So we're interested in knowing what species oxidized and what species reduced. In order to find that out, I got to see some charges. And man, they didn't give me any charges here. I need to see those charges. Show me those charges. Anyway, um, so we just got to make them. Now remember, with aqueous solutions, that means that they're going to dissolve. And what are they going to dissolve into? You got it, the ions. So it doesn't matter if you can, you know, perfectly balance what's going on in your uh, compound. The only thing that basically matters is just making sure that you have the, the correct charges. For example, SNNO32. Well, I see that I have a nitrate here, right? That's, that's always going to stay together. So you have two components. You have the tin, SN, and you have the NO3. The same thing for this. You have the manganese, MN, and you have the NO3. Now use those subscripts to crisscross up to tell you what you got. I have one SN and two NO3s. The one crisscrosses up telling me that the uh, nitrate was a negative one, and the two crisscrosses up telling me that the tin was a plus two. Same thing going on here. It's a one and two. So same types of subscripts. N nitrate is negative one. MN is a plus two. Now remember, we only care about things that oxidize or reduce. They have to have a difference in charge. So look at those nitrates. I have a NO3 minus one yielding an NO3 minus one. There is literally no change here. So if there's no change with any charge, that's not going to be oxidized nor reduced. But now we can kind of see what's going on here. I started off with just an MN and I went, and maybe I'll do it in a different color. I went to a MN, but that MN was secretly MN plus two. So that's, that's a whole different ball game here. We have a different charge. And the same thing goes for the SN. I went from an SN that was technically a plus two, and I went to just a SN. And maybe if I can, maybe I'll, maybe I'll loop around here. Whee! There you go. Now, what's the formula for knowing how to find the standard cell potential. Well, the formula is this right here, right? E cell is always going to equal the cell potential of the cathode minus the cell potential of the anode. More simpler terms, we just say cathode minus anode, cathode minus anode. And remember, reduction is the cathode. You're always going to become more negative. Your anode is oxidation. You're always going to become more positive in your charges. So if we just do one of these, right, MN, there was no charge in the upper right-hand corner. That's a zero. So I start off with a zero charge, and now I'm going to an MN that was a plus two. Did I become more positive or did I become more negative? Yeah, I became more positive. So more positive is always the anode. And if that's the case, that means that the MN's value is going to go with the anode, which means that the tin has to be the cathode, but we should always double check. You started off with the plus two and you ended up with nothing. That's the zero. Now you're becoming more negative and that's clearly the cathode. So SN's value gonna go over here, but where are we getting these values from? 
Ah, that's where I went in the back of the textbook to find them out for you. Now, just a quick side note. If you are memorizing cathode minus anode, cathode minus anode, you do not have to change these E values. I don't care what the half reaction is, you do not have to change those values. So I'm literally just gonna take my SN value as this and plug it in, negative 0 0.1375, and I'm going to subtract that with the other half reaction value, 1.185. Notice how, you know, if there were any coefficients here, I don't care. It's whatever those values are. It's that simple. I know, right? The, maybe the one time that chemistry is simple. It's, it's all good, right? Let's plug this in. Negative 0.1375 minus, ooh, and that value, did anybody catch that? That value is a negative. Just triple checking. Good and good. Okay, so now I'm back to the calci. So minus a negative 1.185. Making sure that everything looks good here. Let's press enter. And it seems like this is only to the thousandths place. So technically my answer should only be to the thousandths. And it's going to be 1.048 if we care about sig figs. And that's going to be volts. So that's my standard cell potential value. Is this spontaneous or not? That just comes by knowing the charges, you know, whether your E cell is a positive or a negative value. If your E cell is positive, greater than zero, spontaneous reaction. If your E cell is negative, it's non spontaneous. E cell here is a clearly positive value. So if it's positive, that means it's spontaneous. Nothing worse than that. So there's that second part. No additional energy sources outside energy sources to make this reaction run. There we go. I really hope this helped. Let me know in the comments. Subscribe to the channel to help us out. Thank you so much. And let's keep learning. All right. Keep practicing, practicing, practicing. You guys got this. Don't give up. All right. The, uh, the light is at the end of the tunnel. And I'll be here every step of the way. I will see you in the next lesson. Bye-bye.